Okay, how's it going everybody? We're gonna go ahead and get started pretty much immediately. Um, some things you need to know is on the periodic table, um, before we get started with naming your nomenclature, we're going to break each of these columns down into different things. So this is gonna be column one right here, column two, column three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. These transition metals um, won't be included in what we're about to do. Anything in the first column is going to have a plus one charge. Anything in the second column will be plus two. The third will be plus three, the fourth plus or minus four, then minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. These charges apply only for things above the stair stepper. We're not talking about metalloids, we're talking about um, non-metals over here, and then things in the first and second column. Now there are a couple exceptions. Zinc, cadmium, and silver, we have to memorize the charges of those things. These two are going to be plus two, and silver is going to be plus one. So those are charges that we have to understand and know when building ionic compounds. So let's go ahead and answer the first couple of questions. So question number one says, what is the charge of beryllium? Well, if you look at this, here we have a BE right here. That's gonna be a positive two because this is the second column. The next one is sodium. Sodium falls right here. It's gonna be a plus one because it's in the plus one column. Magnesium, right here, it's going to be plus two. Oxygen, it's right here, it's going to be a negative two. Now something to think about is that oxygen um, in and of itself, if you're looking at a single atom of oxygen, is O. When you add a two minus charge to it, it becomes oxide. In fact, any of the non-metals with a charge on it becomes an ide. So this next one, Cl, we would normally call this chlorine. So neutral chlorine is chlorine, but when it has a negative one charge, we call it chloride. Finally, we have tin, which is Sn. Sn falls right here. Do we know the charge of it? Hopefully not, because we only know charges of things above the stair stepper and these three that we counted. So this, is a mystery. <laughs> Alright, so if we want to make an ion compound out of something, um, we're talking about a metal and a non metal will make an ionic compound. We name the metal and then the non metal and end with I, just like I told you, oxygen with two minus charges, oxide. So for example, it says name this. Well, Na sodium and Cl is chlorine. This would be chloride. How do we know that? Well, sodium move this out of the way. So how do we know that? Well, sodium is Na plus because it has a plus one charge. Chlorine is a Cl minus. Sodium, we just need one of each in order to make the compound NaCl. Let's move on to this one, magnesium chloride. Going backwards, it makes a lot more sense. So it says, what is the formula for magnesium chloride? Well, magnesium, again, over here, is an Mg with a two plus charge. And chlorine, we know when it's an ionic compound, <clears throat> when you have a metal and a non-metal, it's gonna be a Cl minus. So our ultimate goal is to make them neutral. So you want your charges to cancel. If you want your charges to cancel, you need to find a way to get these charges to cancel. A positive will cancel with a negative, but here I have two positives. So I need two negatives to cancel out that charge. Here gives me a total of positive two 
Here it gives me a total of negative two, and that's why the formula for Mg for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Moving on to this one. What is the formula for aluminum chloride? You have to look at charges. So go over here to aluminum. Aluminum's right here. Aluminum is an exception. This is also a plus three. So when we go over here, aluminum chloride is going to be Al3 plus, and chloride again is right here with a negative one. So your question is how do you get those charges to cancel? Well, we have aluminum three plus, we therefore need three negatives to get it to cancel. So we have three positives, and now we have three negatives, and aluminum chloride would be AlCl3. So whenever I say aluminum chloride, I'm talking about AlCl3, it's the only thing that works. Beryllium oxide. Now from the initial one, we knew that beryllium has a two plus charge. We know that oxide is O2 minus. You just need one of each to get them to cancel. Positive two plus a negative two equals zero, and BeO is your answer. Looking at aluminum, uh, aluminum oxide, we have Al3 plus. We have an O with a two minus charge, so aluminum and oxygen. Um, and we're going to run into a problem because we can't just do one of each. We'll be left over with an extra charge. We can't do two of one. Like for example, if we did two of these and we have a negative four and a positive three, we need to get the charges to cancel. We have to get the charge to cancel. It has to be neutral. So what we can do <clears throat> is find a common factor between them. That's gonna be six. So if we multiply this by two and this one by three, here we get a positive six. Here we get a negative six. And that is why aluminum oxide is Al2. O three. Finally, we move on to rubidium two sulfide. I'm sorry, I should have written this R B two S. That two didn't get subscripted. If <clears throat> all right, I already kind of named it, I guess. So all we have to look at is the fact that this is a metal and a nonmetal, and we know the charge of this metal. In fact, if we were to look it up, it would be positive one because it falls in the first column. So if we know the charge or we know the metal is in the first, second column, it's one of these guys or it's aluminum, then we automatically know the charge. And in this case, we do know the charge. This would just be straight up rubidium. And then the S with a two minus charge is sulfide. If you want to break this down or go backwards, you'd know that rubidium sulfide would be a compound between rubidium with a positive one charge and sulfide with a two minus charge because it follows right there. And you would need two rubidiums to cancel it out. And RB2S is the only thing that's rubidium sulfide. RB2S is rubidium sulfide. Rubidium sulfide is RB2S. Let's go ahead and add some polyatomic ions into this. Hopefully you've already memorized polyatomic ions, but if you did not, um, then pause this and go watch the polyatomic ion video. So coming back to this, it says, what is the formula for aluminum phosphate? Well, we know aluminum's got a three plus charge. Phosphate is PO4 with a three minus charge. A three positive and a three negative cancel each other out. We just need one of each. We're gonna treat these polyatomic ions as though they're one whole big thing. This is just something with a three minus charge. So we just need one aluminum and one phosphate, in which case aluminum phosphate is AlPO4. There should never be a charge written <clears throat> on your ionic compound when you're done, because if there's a charge written, that means something didn't get canceled and you want them to cancel or else it's not an ionic compound. All right, magnesium nitrate. We know magnesium is Mg2+. Nitrate, you should now know, is NO3 with a negative one charge. 
In this case, you have more positive than you do negative, so you need more negative. You need two negatives in total to cancel out this two positive. And magnesium nitrate is magnesium. Again, you need two whole nitrates. This is when we use parentheses to represent that we need two whole nitrates to cancel out that two positive charge. Aluminum sulfate. Again, we have aluminum with a three plus charge and sulfate is SO4 with a two minus charge. Kind of the same thing as when we had aluminum oxide. We're gonna need two of these and three of those to get a positive six from this and a negative six from this. And that will get them to cancel. In other words, Al2, and then we want three whole sulfates, not three kind of sulfates, not three of the O4s, we want three whole sulfates. And that's why we write it like that. Again, no charge should ever be written on these things. Finally, silver nitrate, or excuse me, silver nitrite, as we'll learn. Silver has a plus one charge. This, we should recognize as nitrite, NO2 minus, and that's why it's one and one. That's corduroy. He's really sad. He wants to play. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at this, silver nitrite. This is silver. This is nitrite. Silver nitrite is the actual name of the thing. You just name what is there. Not to be confused with silver nitrate. Silver nitrate would be AgNO3. Also not to be confused with silver nitride. Silver nitride would be AG3N because nitride would have a three minus charge in each silver. You need three of them to cancel it out. Silver nitrite, silver nitrate, silver nitride. Endings matter. What if you don't know the charge of the metal? Well, let's look at this. If I ask you for lead and chromate, well, chromate you ought to know is CrO4 with a two minus charge. Lead, you know, is Pb. But lead is right here. It's under the stair stepper. It's not one of the ones we circled. You have zero idea of what charge lead has. You have absolutely no idea what charge lead has. So for example, I, if I told you lead chromate, if it has a plus one charge, it's gonna be something different than if it has a plus two or a plus three or a plus four. This is where Roman numerals come in. Roman numerals are one is I, two is I, I, three is I, yi, yi. Four is I, V, five is V, six is V, I, seven is V, I, I, and you probably won't get eight, which is V, I, I, I. And these Roman numerals are the charge of the thing. So here we're looking at lead one chromate. This is the charge of the metal that tells you what the charge of the metal is. So lead one is telling you it's PB with a plus one charge. And now it's saying, okay, the other thing is chromate. We know chromate is CrO4, two minus. Now we need to find a way to get these charges to cancel. You have more chromate charge, two negative, than you do this positive over here. So we need two leads. And lead one chromate would be PB2, CR, O4.
What is the formula of lead 2 chromate? Well, that would be Pb2 plus, because again, that 2 is telling you it's a 2 positive charge. Chromate is CrO4 with the 2 minus charge. You just need one of each. Pb Cr O4 is lead to chromate. All right, now what if I asked you backwards to name something? Well, in this case, it's SnCl2. You might not know the charge of tin right off the bat, but we do know the charge of chlorine. It's negative one when it's chloride. So over here, we have two times negative one for the chlorines. That means this tin must be a positive two. It has to be a positive two. So let me write that a little prettier. Ah, let's go over here. So Sn, Cl2 must be broken down into two Cl minuses and some tin. In order to get these two negatives to cancel, this has to be a positive two. And that is why this is tin two chloride. All right, this one, this is titanium. And we have to ask ourselves what it's bound to. Well, PO4 is phosphate. And phosphate is actually PO4 with a three minus charge. In order to get that three minus to charge to cancel, that titanium has to be three positive. It has to be, there's no other choice because it's only one of each. One phosphate was three negative, that means titanium must be three positive. And that is why this is titanium. three phosphate. Last but not least, we have this one, sodium. We got a sodium here and we got a sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, two minus. Each sodium is, do you have to figure it out or do you already know the charge of sodium? You should already know the charge of sodium, it's right there. Don't fall into this trap. Each sodium is positive one. I don't need to tell you the charge of sodium. This is straight up sodium sulfate. No charge needed. And that is the end of ionic compound naming. Whew.